Hey guys, check it out. I got something new for you today. Uh, first of all, I'm excited to mention that we're looking at breaking ground next week on affordable duck hunting impoundment uh, on our hunting property in central Minnesota next week. Now, for those of you who have seen a, a few of my other videos, you, you probably you know this already, but I really started this YouTube channel after getting interested in this concept of floodable uh, duck hunting impoundments, which up until a couple years ago, I didn't really know anything about. You know, I mentioned I'm in Minnesota and just nobody, nobody does this up here. And I think the reason is because uh, flooding just isn't part of normal farming practices in this part of the U.S., uh, the further south you go, obviously you see it more and more, but just uh, in Minnesota, no one uses that uh, as part of their uh, repertoire of farming techniques, if you will. So I got interested in this concept and, I, you know, there wasn't really a comprehensive source of information on it. So I started this YouTube channel to kind of share my experience with it. And I want to just continue on with that today uh, by showing you what we're what we're planning on doing here. So let me give you the lay of the land. It looks like I got my laser pointer fired up. So here's what, what you're looking at. This is an aerial photo of a portion of our hunting property. And you know we've owned this property for a dozen or so years, but I just recently realized that we have uh, almost a perfect or ideal landscape for building a floatable uh, duck hunting impoundment. And here's why. We have two key things. Number one, we have significant grade across this tillable acreage that you're looking at. So from the low area, the low swampy area down here by the pond, to the high area up here in this oak grove, there's roughly five feet of elevation difference. So why does that matter? Well, it puts you in a good position to build a berm or embankment on the low side of this uh, tillable acreage. And naturally, everything drains from left to right uh, on the picture here that you're looking at. So it, it sets you up well to capture a lot of rainwater naturally, uh, which is nice because it makes you re less reliant on, on pumps and so forth for the purposes of flooding your opponent. On the flip side, it also helps you with drainage. Uh, if you have a berm here, uh, in the springtime, you're going to have to drain this out. And from folks I've talked to who have built these things, you know, getting these things actually dried out so you can get back in and replant in the spring is always a challenge. And uh, fortunately, we have good grade. Everything continues to drain out to the right here, ultimately into a, a creek that you can't see on this photo. So it's a really ideal spot. The other uh, factor that I didn't mention is, you know, obviously we have a water source right here. So if we do need water to manually pump onto the or into the impoundment, it's available. So let me uh, move on to the next slide here and show you the show you the plan that we're actually looking to put in place. Okay, so there's a couple key components to point out. First of all, we have our berm or embankment. What we're looking at doing is building a roughly 800 foot embankment. <clears throat> now, that's lengthwise, obviously. What I, I spent some time on here with a laser transit and kind of surveyed this out. And basically what I estimated is if I can get 30 inches of water uh, in... Uh, in this area, I'll be able to flood about two and a half acres. Right? And I'm pretty satisfied with that. Let me speak a little bit towards to the height of the berm or in the bank embankment. We're shooting for a target height of uh, four feet. Now, when you read some of the resources on moist soil management and puddle ducks, um, by the way, let me just mention, if one of the a great resource you can just type this into Google is uh, moist soil management U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They got a ton of information on what grows well in kind of swampy areas in terms of plants and and waterfowl, what they like, and so forth. One of the things I learned when I was reading that material is puddle ducks only can go down about 18 inches to feed. So in other words, you don't need to build an impoundment that's capable of holding, you know, six, eight, 10 feet of water. It's just completely unnecessary. I mean, you don't even need 18 inches. But I will say we're targeting about four feet here. 
because it's nice to have some ability to fluctuate the water level for management purposes. So for example, uh, early in the duck hunting season, what you might want to do is just put a little bit of water on your food plot to flood out perhaps the deep spot. You know, if we reference uh, this area is obviously the, the lowest spot of the floodable impoundment right by the berm, that's what's going to flood first when you put water on this thing. And maybe early in the season, that's where I just want to start out. Let the ducks kind of congregate there, deplete that area of forage. Then I can put more water on the impoundment to kind of expand the area that's flooded and so forth. So it just gives you some flexibility from that standpoint. So the other thing I'll mention with the berm is we're, and, and it's not on this drawing, we're going to install uh, water control structures along this thing. I'm probably going to do three because as I mentioned, you obviously once spring rolls around on subsequent seasons, you're going to need the capability of draining this thing out so you can replant your food plot and do the whole thing over again. Now, we're also going to expand the existing pond that we have here, uh, as you can see drawn out. I'm doing that for two reasons. Number one, obviously I need material to build my embankment. So that's where some or all of it's going to come from. Number two, I want to get my water source closer to my food plot area just in case I need a supplemental source of water or actually have to like install a pump to, to you know, to manually pump water on this thing in case uh, we don't get enough rain uh, or whatever the case might be. But speaking of flooding, here's really my, here's really the ideal scenario. So if we go up here on the high side of the tillable acreage, despite this being roughly five feet higher over here, there's a low kind of swampy area, which you can kind of see here, I've outlined. <laughs> There's always standing water in there, uh, despite the, the higher elevation. It just, it's kind of a natural depression up here. So, in, in fact, you can see, and I marked this on the, on the diagram here, or on the illustration, this was actually ditched years ago for the purpose, they tried to drain it, and even so, there's still standing water in here. But this sets me up really well for building a potential reservoir. So here's what we're here's my idea on what we're going to try to do. We're going to block up this old ditch. We're going to build a berm right here, uh, which will give me some vertical help in terms of collecting water. And then we're going to excavate this out, try to build a roughly four foot deep pond here. And what I'm hoping is this thing holds enough water to basically serve as a reservoir. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll install a water control structure here and because I have elevation from up here down to the food plot, I'll be able to just manually open this gate or water control structure to put water on this thing in the fall. So no screwing around with pumps, none of that. That is my ideal scenario and I'm, I'm really hopeful that it's going to work out. I'm not, I'm a little skeptical that I might not have quite enough volume, uh, but we'll see what happens. If I don't, my backup is going to be having this pond, which will be close, and I'll be able just to throw like a trash pump out there uh, to pump some, any supplemental water that I need. So that's really the lay of the land. Uh, you know, it's not rocket science, but you do have to be thoughtful, uh, especially with some of the drainage issues and, and a couple of the other things I mentioned. But I'll leave it at that. I certainly welcome any comments. Uh, for those of you, maybe you can identify something that, that I'm doing that's really stupid. And if you can save me some time and money, I uh, certainly would welcome any feedback. But I, I'll definitely keep you guys up to date on the progress. Like I said, uh, we're looking to break ground next week, and uh, I'll keep you up to date. So I'll see you next time.